and gentlemen, welcome to the esteemed FaceTime with Leaders, an initiative by World Development Corporation. I am Falak Zaid Khan, anchor at World Development Corporation. FaceTime with Leaders is a platform for industry titans to share their experiences, thoughts, ideas, and best practices in order to inspire one another and future leaders. In a nutshell, we attempt to encapsulate the multi-decadal learnings acquired by these industry leaders. We also hope that by conducting these FaceTime with Leaders interviews, we can bring together a global community of eminent personalities. By bringing together such visionaries on one platform, we hope to play a part in inspiring the lives of other leaders. Great learnings from great leaders undoubtedly assist everyone by identifying, nurturing, and using the trade secrets that are proven success formulas for many. And this is what we aim for with these sessions by making them a gathering of industry stalwarts and a knowledge sharing community. We have one such industry giant on FaceTime with leaders with us today, CA Prachi Jain. Hello, welcome CA Jain. We are glad to have you here today with us on FaceTime with leaders. Thank you so much, uh, Palak. Yeah. So let me give you a quick brief about CA Prachi Jain. She is a remarkable individual with an impressive list of accolades and a stellar career in the world of finance and impact investment, embodying the qualities of a true leader and visionary. As a co-founder, CSO and director of Ednovate EdTech, she has not only demonstrated her prowess in the financial sector, but also exemplified her commitment to making a lasting impact on the world. Her achievements have garnered her recognition as one of the top 100 women in finance in 2020 by AIWMI and Mumbai's Women Leaders in 2022 by the World Women Leadership Congress. She is also an official mentor to several companies. So, Ms. Jen, could you let our viewers know in brief about your career journey so far? Uh, thank you, Falak, uh, for the kind introduction. And uh, it's an esteemed pleasure to be here. Uh, uh, in FaceTime interview uh, uh, organized by WDC. Uh, it's an amazing feeling. And uh, uh, my story is a little uh, uh, I, different from the world, or I'll say it's a little. Uh, uh, so I hail from a small town called Gwalior. It's a heritage city. People know uh, knows it's for sports, uh, uh, culture, heritage. Uh, uh, I never wanted to be a CA. CA happened to me, I'll say, by chance. I always wanted to be an IS officer uh, while prepare. So I got selected in Asia's best college, which is Sriram College of Commerce and Lady Sriram. And uh, unfortunately, my father was a little reluctant to send me to uh, Delhi. Mm -hmm. And the reasons are very obvious. Yes. And uh, by that time, the Mumbai forms were filled up. And then I had nothing to do uh, with along with my graduation because IS can only happen post the, the, right. the graduation gets completed, right. like post I, I graduate. So uh, when this happened, I had nothing to do. And one fine day, my father gave me the form, like, Beta, aap kuch nahi karo. So just give the form. And I was taller. I, I was good in ac yeah. academics, I will say. And uh, then I, I started appearing for my exam, level one. I scored 19th rank all over India. Level two, I scored 42nd rank all over India. With these uh, academical background, I will say, I got started getting calls from a lot of companies outside Gwalior, which is primarily Mumbai because it is a financial hub. And uh, uh, finally, I think my father realized that how how long can I hold my daughter? And he actually came and told me that this is the time for you. Go ahead, live your life. I know I have to hold you back because you were little. Uh, for, for your father, you'll always be that always be that little kid, yeah. right? So uh, when that happened, uh, he's like me. You go ahead, uh, pursue your dreams, do your articleship from Bombay. Fortunately, I had my middle and uncles uh, and aunts in Bombay. I stayed with them. I completed my articleship from. RSM, which uh, later got acquired by PricewaterhouseCoopers in 2007. And that's where I will say my professional journey started. Uh, I am very thankful to my seniors there in RSM, especially mentioning Asha Lata, uh, uh, Himanshu sir, Amarjit sir, uh, Shweta, Khyati, who actually helped this little town girl uh, to ensure that she's not scared, G gave me that room. They knew I have it in me. Uh, but you always need that hand, hand right. holding, right? And uh, I know there was a point in time uh, after three months, I just wanted to move out of this corporate world because I thought it's not for me. It's a little overwhelming for a 19, 20-year-old guy, right? And uh, though you have been getting good ranks, marks in classes, but making a 
writing or drafting an official email is altogether a different thing. Like interpretation is always easy for me. Uh, but when that happened, I think I remembered that call. I called up my brother and I said, it's not happening. And my brother was younger to me. He's an engineer and MBA. And he then told me, since Papa has told you, just try, give it a, give it a chance, give it one more month. And you come back. No, who's stopping you from coming back? So I think that is the, uh, uh, that one milestone I will say which changed my life because uh, in that one month, uh, I got a lot of this support and I think I can make it into this place. And I realized the spirit of Bombay, it takes everybody in, right? And uh, and then Mumbai is my, is my uh, city, my place uh, for almost 19 years now. As much time wow. I've spent it in my hometown, which is Gwalior. Uh, I, I'm settled here. I don't want to go anywhere. And someone asked me, I said, this is my home. I don't want to go out anywhere. This is the place I love. And uh, whatever, you give me money, you give me anything. I don't want to leave this place. This is this is where my heart and soul is now. So that's about the introduction pertaining to uh, my academic journey. In 2007, I cleared my C again with flying colors. Uh, along with C, I've also completed CS because I was parallelly giving those exams. And uh, uh, again, the, uh, so I have that risk-taking appetite because of, I, I come from a business family, right? Okay. So, and it's not that there is some fear that I have to earn for the family. So I had that liberty that I, I was just earning because I I wanted to do something for myself. Okay. Uh, so I'll say I'm that privileged lot. So that point in time, uh, uh, I remember this conversation. I will tell you, uh, we were appearing for an interview and uh, 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 private equity and venture capital was something which is like the glamorous, which is still the glamorous industries right now. But uh, I knew that because it is at the top. So maybe I should try for iBanking. So I went up here for an interview for an iBanking and it was a bank. It, it, it was, yes, bank. That, that's where I had my first job. And uh, I remember that interview and uh, uh, I actually told them that. So they were like, no, you don't come to iBanking. You come to corporate banking and uh, see, there are so many people who move from corporate banking to iBanking. And I, I remember giving them a reply that I, I Stating that no, I want to do. I only want i banking. I want to do with corporate banking, and I'm very happy to follow your example and all. So I think uh, I was not selected. And after ten days, uh, I got a call. Like I, the list was shortlisted. I had a lot of my friends who moved to Yes Bank. I was not selected. I said it's okay. It doesn't matter because my seniors will call me to PwC because they're there. So I always had that comfort zone. And then suddenly I was like, okay. After ten days, they said that. We have a vacancy in private equity. We are launching a fund, which is India's first SME food and agribusiness fund. We need person of your expertise because during my article ship, I have only done private equity uh, structuring, which is like a fund structuring, tax structuring, because markets were actually getting opened up. And nobody knew that particular segment uh, at my age as much as I knew it because I, I've just done thoroughly during that point in time. And being a CA, financial acumen comes very natural to me, right? I was also a CSO compliance, corporate governance key to my profile, right? So that happened and I was like, uh, Papa, they're calling me for this particular thing. So I went for an interview, got selected. Uh, and as I said that I've always had that risk appetite. So I joined a fund which was not raised. So we started raising funds. And uh, then there was a team movement. So um, I moved from Yes Bank to India's first SME segment food and agribusiness fund, which was called as SEED. It was a US-based private equity fund. They had 19 funds across the world and they wanted to set up their base in India. And uh, 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 there were three team members, two of my seniors and I, we kind of shifted. We, I set up their base in India, right from writing the uh, application to SEBI in order to save money because I knew how to do it, to setting up their base in India. Then Lehman prices happened in 2008. Again, as I say, my life journey is all, it, it's very different, though it looks like a small town girl coming to Mumbai. Lehman hits, and now the funding is stopped across, right? So it was a tough time to raise fund. Uh, along with my team, I raised uh, $50 million during that time, closed our fund successfully uh, 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 in 2010, deployed $26 million in nine portfolio companies across the entire food spectrum of value chain, which we have divided into 33 subsectors. And uh, uh, in 2016, 
I kind of have to move out because I have to take a sabbatical. I was a mother and my kid was a premature child. And when I have to choose between a premature kid and uh, uh, my job, I think it's always that mother's calling which comes up. And uh, uh, he was a 32.3 week baby and uh, I don't want to get into the technicalities. But I did try to balance between the both. And I realize it's not happening. And I'm one of those who want to give 100% to everything, whatever I do. And uh, I kind of moved out, took a sabbatical for eight months, realized nahi bat sakte ghar pe. I can't sit at home. And I need to be working. I joined an iBanking firm. After you've worked in private equity, working in an iBanking firm is a little difficult for you. It becomes a little difficult. I realized that pretty soon and... Uh, as soon as I got an opportunity in 2018 to join India's first gender lens focused fund, uh, I, I joined that fund again, as I say, that high risk appetite. This fund was also not raised. I formed part of the founding team, the core team member, raised, uh, wrote PPM uh, policies for the fund, uh, set up the fund in India, raised 125 crores for the fund. Then pandemic hit, right? I mean, during that time. So, it's going up, then certain things happening. Pandemic happened and we did two deals and uh, uh, there was little, uh, I mean, the markets, You, it's it's very unpredictable, right? What, what, whatever was happening. And I was also that point in time thinking what I need to do in my life. Do I need to continue? Because I've already spent 15 plus years of my life in private equity and venture capital. I mean, I just know everything about it. You ask me, Ki se scratch pe start karna, yahan khatam karna, I can just do it for you. But, uh, uh, so I think I was at that inflection point where I was just thinking what I need to do next. And when, uh, for a lot of people, private equity is the last job which they will think. For me, unfortunately, it was my first job. So for 15 years, I've only done that. And uh, I thought that for me, the gradual progression would be to be an entrepreneur now. And I joined Adnovate as a strategic advisor in 2022, June. And uh, just to figure out whether it's making sense for me to be part of an entrepreneurship world or not. Of course, I've seen startups from the other side as an investor, not on being an uh, entrepreneur. I love the hustle. I like the team. I know the cause, what they were working for. Uh, and I like the clarity of thought of the team. Uh, I joined Adnovate in 2021, uh, 2023 full time. And uh, as a co-founder and chief strategy officer, I'm also a director, uh, one of the directors of the company. And uh, it's like almost a year now, I'll be completing uh, a year. And I'm very happy because there's always that hustle. So I think these are the milestones which I have, mm -hmm. like the risk appetite. Mm -hmm. I sometimes used to call me, when, when I was working also that I'm a professional entrepreneur, like the qualities of an entrepreneur. I will not call myself an intrapreneur because it's primarily a bigger company where you are working for. These are all smaller companies you're working for. And then you have to have get up every morning with a set of challenges the way you're working mm -hmm. as an entrepreneur. So I think this this makes me, it, this this is a very exciting journey for me because I, I could have never sat. So I see a lot of people during pandemic telling that we don't have work. Uh, it's it's very depressing because uh, 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 it's, it's getting little, uh, I mean, I said, I don't know. I have so much work during pandemic, even during pandemic. So I'm blessed. Uh, uh, I, I And because uh, everything was online, I could take sessions. I could uh, I could be a mentor to a lot of companies. So I was working, in fact, maybe 2x of what I was working. Of course, because of the pandemic, everybody knows what's happening, right? I mean, you were left at your own mercy, right? You have nothing there for you. So it's your family and you. So I think I worked so much during that time. So I feel myself lucky that I was alive. I had work and uh, I enjoyed it thoroughly. So I think I should be thankful to God uh, that uh, yeah. he has given me this journey. And uh, yeah, so I think these are my uh, milestones. Bala. So given the multiplicity of roles you handle across organization, what keeps you motivated? Uh, so, Palak, I think I'm sure uh, as I was answering the first question, you would have realized that something which keeps me motivated is the passion which I have mm -hmm. for my work. I just can't mm -hmm. run away from it. A lot of people say music is their passion, something else is their passion. For me, work is my passion. So, I think that keeps me motivated. And after joining Ednovate, one motivation which I had is that every day when I get up, I want to make it India's best coaching classes for commerce students. So, I'm striving hard to do that. 
I think other things which helps keeps me inspiring or motivated is the the fact that I am giving it back to the society or to the fraternity I belong to. Right, because I'm a CA and this classes is primarily for commerce students CA and I know the pain points and I'm trying to solve those pain points and we're also trying to be the better version of ourselves as I was yesterday. So so I think every day when I get up, I just want to do something better, something better. Uh, uh, other than that, if I see a, a, a social and a very personal part of motivation, which I had is, it's it's the opportunity which I see to contribute my expertise and the satisfaction of making a difference uh, to the world uh, by any means is something which keeps me motivated. And also uh, uh, being a part of the positive change, which I think is very, very crucial for my existence and uh, help or set an example for the aspiring professionals uh, 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 that this is what needs to be done. So I think these are the things which kind of keep me motivated always. Uh, yeah, for like I think I, I think I've answered your question. That's unless you have to ask me something else. <laughs> yes, that's really very great. I must say, indeed. So being recognized as one of the top hundred women in finance and a woman leader in Mumbai is a remarkable accomplishment. What do these accolades mean to you, and how have they impacted your career? Uh, uh, for like I will say, it's a very humbling uh, achievements, and I feel very humbled to have been recognized as top hundred women in finance. I'm a woman leader in Mumbai. Uh, uh, I'm very, very uh, thankful to God for that. And of course, my parents, uh, my father is no more. I lost him in 2010. But I think if he would have been alive, these are the trophies I would have given to him. Because uh, uh, he uh, he's someone who has always pushed me. He's always pushed me to do things. Uh, and I really miss him for that. And I want to see him, how his little daughter is growing and doing well in his professional career. Uh, these Accolades actually signify the recognition of my commitment to the finance field and my contribution to my community. So it, it really means a lot to me. Further, I feel that it has also given me a platform to amplify the importance of diversity and inclusion in any industry because you just can't do, do away with that, right? So I think that's very important for me. Uh, uh, plus, they've also opened up, uh, in fact, I'll say expanded my network and opened doors to exciting opportunities. Uh, uh, because you you tend to meet a lot of like-minded women when you go to these places and then you create a network and they're happy to help you out. So I think in, in a way, these these awards have really make and help me uh, uh, move ahead in my career. Further, I will say these awards have also kind of inspired me to strive for even greater excellence in life and continue to advocate in what I truly believe in. And I'm also very, very passionate about is is gender equality in the finance industry having worked in this industry for 15 plus years i know in 2007 specifically private equity and venture capital there were hardly any women who was who were working there so i never had a lot of uh, uh, women leaders in in my particular industry to look forward as mentors or something whom i want to aspire to so i do understand the need for it and such uh, awards i kind of ensure that uh, there is there is there is there is there, there is this communication which is flowing among the community women community the mentoring which is happening and i think that makes a very lasting impact uh, to to the economy as a whole that's really very really, uh, great i must say indeed so uh, how and when did you develop an interest in corporate governance so uh, falak as i said that uh, being a ca cs and of course i hold a law degree i also had a certificate in ESG investing uh, by CFA. I am. Uh, I've just completed an entrepreneurship course uh, from IM Bangalore, uh, which is which is which is a Goldman Sachs program. Plus, I also have a Gender Lens Fellowship Asia 2023. Why I kind of uh, made uh, these things clear to you to in, uh, to provide you the fact that it started very early in my life that interest in corporate governance because it's during my academic journey that. I just got interested in this particular space. And for us, it is part and parcel of life. It, it is not that this is one particular space. It has to happen. Like for a CA, this, this is just normal. You need a sound financial management. There needs to be corporate, corporate compliances. You have to have an ethical business conduct. Professional ethics is, co is to the core of everything, whatever we do. So I think these uh, uh, foundational experiences which I had when I was studying also 
piqued my curiosity towards how organizations should operate responsibly and ethically. And uh, that led me, that developed my interest in this particular field. And as I advanced in my career, I realized that the transformative impact of effective governance on an organization and how it is, it's also very, very crucial for an organization because as you grow, it, it's not, it's, it's, it's not like voluntarily you can do it. You have to do it mandatory because it helps you in growth of the organization. And after a point in time, you will also realize the benefit good corporate governance will bring into your organization. So I feel it, it, it has become an essential part of, of, of my understanding of how this world works. And that's why I got very, very keen and interested in knowing more about it and understanding it in a bit. Yes, that's very interesting. So our next question is also on the similar line. So as a corporate governance expert, what values do you bring to the table? Yeah. So as I told you, like uh, uh, this is this is ingrained in my professional ethos, right? Uh, 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 TA when so we used to have a subject when we used to talk about professional ethics. So it's it's too much into it, and these values include an unwavering commitment to integrity, ethics, and transparency. I kind of uh, prioritize accountability, fairness, and a profound belief in the significance of sustainable and responsible business practices. And on the top of it, I will put that diversity and inclusions are very, very core to my values. And I work tirelessly to create that environment where everyone, everyone's voice is heard and respected. I think this is very, very crucial. I have just for seven years, I've just worked in that particular space. And I know how important is this. Uh, I'll say my approach is very collaborative and adaptable and it allows me to champion and implement governance practices that not only meet the regulatory requirements, but also foster that culture of excellence and ethical leadership in an organization, which is very important. Because when you just kind of tell people that you got to do it, they may, may not do it. But when it becomes part of your culture, right? And when it percolates down from the top to the bottom, I think it, it comes naturally to every person who is working in your organization. So I think this is very important for me and I think this is how I see it. So when we talk about technology, what are some of the most remarkable changes you have seen in your field with changes in technology? And what changes do you expect to see with the advent of IoT, AI, ML, blockchain, big data and Web 3.0? Uh, so you've spoken a lot. So there's a lot of questions which is covered, uh, 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 Falak. Uh, so I'll just tell you that, uh, and this is something, a very personal view which I have in the education coaching field where I belong to, the impact of technology has been substantial. And I think its future potential is also very exciting. But before I start and take these points one by one, something which I truly believe in that, that specifically in the education field, unlike the deep tech, right? You just can't change the professors or teachers to be replaced by a robot, right? So in our industry, it can be an enabler in the education industry, but it will not take away the charm of yes. peer learning to be physically present and studying. I think that is something which is very crucial. And I think we realize this post pandemic. And we also realize how companies which are heavily relying only on the online platforms, they have, they have their own challenges because you just can't take away the presence of a teacher or a professor from the learning part of it. Okay. And robots, I will, I think they will never be able to uh, uh, truly replace uh, teachers at some point in time. But uh, 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 there may be situations where it may just better it or may support it, but I don't think it can change it. So I think the changes which I see uh, over a period of time is primarily I will talk about is in the online learning space. I think pandemic has been a big, big uh, booster for that because uh, prior to that, uh, Nobody uh, kind of would have think of the online pay third or fourth standard ka bachcha ya K1 ya K2 ka bachcha padega. But I think that shift has been being very, very organic. Maybe uh, it, the reasons were not right for this uh, platform to kind of pick up. But uh, this has picked up and people have accepted online learning as a channel. So I think this is this is picking up. Second, I think the changes which is happening is the personalized learning. So one-to-one -one learning has picked up. Uh, uh, wherein uh, uh, technology is playing a very, very important role and it is catering to the individual needs and abilities 
and improving the overall student engagement and comprehension. The third important thing which you foresee is the global reach. I think with, with the advent of technology, use of internet, which is the IoT Web3, I think all of this has enabled a company from Mumbai to have its presence across, across the globe. Right, so I think these are the changes which is kind of happening, which I'm seeing it today happening. Also, what I realize that there is a lot of data-driven insight, which, which as an educator I get uh, provided I have that technological enablement platform with me, which I have, uh, whereby we kind of gather insights about the student performance and then help them to tailor their coaching strategies strategies for better results. Uh, when I spoke about Web3, I think it's the next phase of internet and it promises a more decentralized and user-centric experiences, potentially transforming how coaching services are being delivered and accessed. So this is what I'm seeing is happening today. But I also foresee that uh, there is a lot which may happen with the use of these technologies, which is, as I say, right now, it's just personalization based on the requirement. But as as AI ML will start setting in, I think there's a lot of hyper-personalization trailing to the need of each individual uh, uh, with the help of data analysis will be possible in future. There would be enhanced engagement. So there could be devices that could create immersive learning experiences. So I know this one company, which I think is Ajuna Lens, and they were primarily working on certain products uh, I'll talk about, which is like an immersive learning. But, uh, and it, it's fab. They're using all those uh, uh, technologies which is available in the market. And we can use the same in the education industry uh, to provide immersive learning experience. So what the kid only have to do is buy that IoT devices, wear it. And once the lecture starts, it will be like a very, very immersive learning experience which, which the kid is having as if it, the person is sitting in the class, right? So I think right. that is something which I think will, will, be, will be the future. Uh, uh, global collaborations uh, with respect to various technologies would be great. AI-driven insights, which I said that right now it's not that much, but I think five to seven years that down the line because we already are kind of gathering those data, those insights would be more helpful in guiding and aiding students in timely and uh, timely manner. Uh, uh, yeah, so I think uh, the coaching field's future is an exciting one and I think technology will definitely play a pivotal role. But as I said that you just can't take away human mm -hmm. entirely from from uh, from the this particular segment which is the education industry. That's very much important. And like, they are two different uh, sides. I mean, two different things, you know, like a uh, uh, human coaching and a robot coaching. That's totally different. Yeah, that's what you just mentioned. You know, like it has its own charm and uh, just take Right. It. And uh, however precision the robo would be, you will always want a surgeon even to stand by you or to see what the robo is doing. Right, right, right. So it's, it's similarly like that. However great the robo can teach. Of course. But I think the robot needs to be fed. It lacks emotional uh, touch. It lacks mm -hmm. it lacks that that community or social mm -hmm. uh, touch, right? So I think there'll always be and and as I said, very very peculiar to my industry. And uh, I kind of uh, uh, I think it, it will take it, it has its own uh, uh, sweet time uh -huh. for technology to just take over everything. Mm -hmm. Yes. So as you know, we are building a community of industry magnets. The move is meant for cross-pollination of knowledge and building a knowledge-sharing community of corporate giants and industry experts. So what are your thoughts about this initiative taken about by Mr. Zishan Pathan, Mr. Hewal Mehta and the whole World Development Corporation team? So I think the initiative which is led by Mr. Zishan Pathan, Mr. Mehta and the WDC team uh, to establish this community is commandable. It's very visionary and it's praiseworthy. Uh, the reason being that such community has never existed and there are here and there, I mean, they are in pockets. So I think uh, this effort is, is welcome. And I'm very glad that they are building up a community of independent director with a focus on ensuring that the requisite expertise for a board position, uh, 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 they could kind of develop and then kind of be part of enhancing and be part of or maybe a step towards enhancing the corporate governance and leadership in an organization, which is very, very important. If you also see data, which is available, there are a lot of uh, uh, independent directors or directors who, who tend to retire because of there's, uh, there's an age requirement. And there will be so much positions, maybe 40 to 50 percent position, which will be vacant by 2024. And I think this initiative uh, is very important. 
because the people who really want to make a difference they may have the expertise but sometimes they do not have that skill set and i think uh, uh, mr patan and hetal uh, hevel actually uh, is kind of doing a, a pretty good job in creating that community i think uh, uh, if you ask me the certain points which i kind of want to raise which is providing an expertise enhancement so this community is primarily uh, is about independent directors and the skills and the expertise which they have so that they effectively contribute to the board level decision making which is very very crucial because a lot of times you have independent directors but they do not understand the concept of corporate governance they are just there on the books because uh, uh, they are just there so i think once they they are they enhance their skill through programs like or communities like what what uh, wdc is developing i feel that the decision making at a board level will be more effective uh, uh, i i think it's it's also more about taking the strategic decision which benefit the organization having the diversified skill set which was missing earlier which i think wdc is helping them to kind of enhance upscale or upgrade they may have it but there may be a possibility that they're not able to utilize it effectively uh, there are a lot of mentorship opportunities which i also feel that this this platform can provide so someone who is already an independent director who is part of the community and someone who aspire to be an independent director when we are together we can exchange uh, uh, views and you can also look forward for mentorship from each other uh, also important part of this community is that you can always share the best practices uh, uh, on this platform because once you do that it becomes it becomes a charter document for an organization to follow or maybe for an individual to ensure that an organization should follow yes. because uh, unless you kind of uh, put all these things in place right uh, uh it, it it is it, it's it's not going to work because it needs a lot of effort as i told you for like maybe for me it comes very naturally organically to me because i understand the space i understand the regulation you tell me i can give you the section number but for others it is not about the section number it is about understanding what is required for them which i think this this platform is kind of beautifully providing them that opportunity of course as i say uh, because it's a community your network gets expanded which is which is very important you connect with your peers uh, you have an opportunity for collaborations and knowledge sharing which which is equally important uh, one important thing which this uh, this program is doing is board diversity i think a lot of times it's about okay independent director hai requirement hai you have to have x number of women on the board so people just hire a woman on the board as it is right so i think that would kind of uh, 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 should not be the thing every person which a company is hiring they should be hiring based on the requisite skill set and with organize organizations like wdc and their kind of collaborations with mca which is ministry of corporate affairs when these two combine and put the right skilled expertised people on the list to be appointed as an independent director by the listed or the unlisted company i think uh, i think this is this is this is something which is everyone in the industry like the person like me is looking at and i'm thankful to them for doing this and i think regulatory compliances would be much better well informed and uh, uh, with this platform uh, uh, wdc will kind of ensure that all the people those who are part of the community knows what's happening are there any regulatory changes is there any change in the companies act are there any changes in the fema fdi regulatory norms uh, sebi i think this becomes important because uh, once you have start once you have learned it i think upgrading and upscaling is equally important so i think in a sense this initiative promotes a collective effort to elevate corporate governance by nurturing a community of well equipped independent directors which are poised to bring their expertise diverse experiences and commitment to excellence to the boardroom which ultimately benefit the organization and all the stakeholders who are part of the organization in a similar manner so i think that's a great initiative uh, falak and i must thank uh, uh, the entire team for uh, what thinking about it and kind of starting this great initiative these have been really kind words by you i must say so it was fantastic conversing with you and i'm confident that your insights will inspire future leaders thank you ca prachi jain for joining us today we wish you the best for your future endeavors 
Moreover, trust that this initiative by Directors Institute unquestionably has expanded the participants' understanding and enriched their minds. And all the wonderful different teachings and principles that you've shared with us, your wonderful career journey so far, I'm sure like everyone watching this, it is going to help them and inspire them and grow in their careers as well. So thank you so much for being with us today on FaceTime with Leaders. Thank you so much, Palak. You have been a great anchor. Thank you for patiently listening to me. I think there are certain things which I'm very, very passionate about. And once I start speaking, I get a little very older interesting about indeed, it. I would say. <laughs> to listen <laughs> to your career journey and uh, especially the part, you know, when the part, no, I mean, you know, very excitingly, you've like described your career journey that and you later on told me also that, you know, what keeps me motivated is my work and that is your passion. So that's very much important. I mean, it's very important to love what you do. So... <laughs> Yeah, and I think otherwise, and as I say, I have always stopped working at a point in time where I am double-minded. I mean, I will never let my work affect. And uh, so I think that clarity of thought I had, and which I think is very crucial, which I feel that a lot of people do not have and they kind of struggle to figure out. And of course, yeah. I think a lot of, um, and as I say, maybe I am I'm privileged uh, or maybe I have that instinct of taking that risk every time and I just listen to myself. I may listen to everybody but I will do what what my heart my soul is telling me I will not say mine because I don't think by my mind if I would I would have thought by my mind I wouldn't have been in those roller coasters right which I would have so I just live life the way I'm happy go lucky person I enjoy live in the moment and I just want to spread happiness across I think <laughs> that's, that's really the good. only way the only gyan which I want to give to anybody if you ask me is like there are two things which are important in your life happiness and peace of mind mm -hmm. if you have achieved these two things everything will follow including money true <laughs> that's really great <laughs> it's a great ending to the wonderful interview <laughs>